I've been in the lithium industry for over 30 years. And that predates the arrival of the lithium ion battery. The company I happened to be working for in 1990 was the company that was chosen to supply the lithium chemicals for Sony when the lithium ion battery was commercialized. And then later on, we supplied the other Japanese companies that got involved in the industry. Later on, the Koreans joined. And finally, China joined in a big way. In the early days, demand wasn't really a problem because it was less than 10% of overall demand. But that's changed greatly over the last few decades. What we have now is a situation where between now and 2025, lithium demand will grow by 300% at least. And in the four to five years after that, that demand will double. What are the numbers? In 2020, we were at about 300,000 metric tons of lithium carbonate equivalents. Albemarle's estimate for 2025 is 1.14 million tons of LCE. My number's a little lower than that, but in any case, it's still tremendous growth. And if you believe the EV penetration numbers being posited by most of the big banks now, in the four years from 2025 to 2029, you're going to have another doubling, at least, of lithium demand. So why is that a problem if you're a lithium company? Well, if you're a junior lithium company, you've struggled mightily to finance your product over the last half a decade. The top four or five lithium companies are pretty much able to self-fund or have lines of credit that enable their expansions. But this industry has gotten to the point now where we need a lot more people to join the party and the investments simply aren't being made. And it's not just lithium. It's the other battery metals. If you're a Tesla fan, you know about nickel, cobalt, aluminum, or NCA batteries. But there's also what we call the forgotten battery metal, and that would be manganese. Uh, so I think if you're a battery maker or a car maker, you probably ought to put some of your best and brightest on developing a robust supply chain of battery raw materials. Because what I see is sim quite simply a crisis coming. With all the announcements of battery gigafactories and new EV platforms and all the billions of dollars of capital that are not only announced, but are actually being allocated, you have to wonder why there's a blind side on the part of both battery makers and most auto OEMs as far as the battery raw materials. They're just being assumed that the investments are being made. And I promise you, investments in adequate amounts are not being made. We're now short well over 20 billion over the next few years, just to stay even with growing lithium demand. So what are the impacts of that? Well, I think the impacts are gonna be, there will be very long waiting lines for electric vehicle orders for a number of years. And that will only change when investment begins to happen. I spend both, almost all of my time on lithium, but it doesn't matter. There, it's the same is true in the other battery raw materials. The other issue you have to realize is that if you just go on Wikipedia and say, you know, what's the nickel capacity out there or what's the lithium capacity out there or pick your, pick your battery raw material. Batteries tend to require high purity and consistent material. And in the case of lithium, most of the plants that were built before the commercialization of the lithium ion battery industry could only produce about half of their material that would qualify for lithium ion batteries. So we have both a shortage in quantity and quality. I think that's probably true in the other battery metals but I would leave you to listen to a couple of podcast episodes that I have on both manganese and nickel and cobalt, where true experts in those fields 
talk about the supply and demand dynamics. I think we're really at a crisis point now. I don't view this situation through the lens of a global battery arms race. I don't like the Cold War thought process that that evokes. Uh, I don't blame China for building a robust supply chain. You know, they were laggards to the party and they're not the best quality battery producer out there, but they have been very smart about developing a global robust battery metal supply chain. And I think now you're seeing the United States and the EU start to play catch up and Hopefully, they do it quickly.